It's the old Doctor Who show, episode number 163. In name only. Is that right? Is that the name of this? In name only? That was. It was, it was pretty good. Centaurans versus the Rutans, part four. Okay. In name only. Uh, yeah, welcome back to the old Doctor Who show. Um, it feels like it's been a while. I think, it, I think it's been a while uh, since it's we met, right? We, the, our last show, official show, was the wrap-up of season one. We kind of have nothing else to do. Right, we're at it. Yeah, so we're just we're gonna hang it out. So, but we had one remaining um, thread to uh, to tie together, and that is the conclusion of the Santarans versus the Rutans. Big finish stories. So that's finish. what we're gonna do today. Dan and I are putting a bow Biggest on it. Finish. Yeah. Dan, how are uh, you? Finally, we get to get to see how all these seemingly completely separate stories how come they together. Connected. And how, and, and uh, my question is. How do they? <laughs> okay, well, save it for the we'll podcast. Get to that. Um, um, Eric, how 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 are you? What's you have you have something coming up in just a couple of days? I have because the news uh, in the United States is no, we're not talking about that. But, uh, my book coming out on Tuesday, and not yes, the attempted all... assassination of a presidential candidate. Yeah, so things are all in... over CNN, all over Fox News, all over MSNBC is the release of yeah. uh, Eric's new book. Right, uh, right, right in the, the well. For the free fall of a uh, major democracy. No, uh, yeah, it's weird. It is all. It's, weird. A, it's a. It's kind of a strange. I, uh, I mean, time. This, this is obviously not a political podcast in any way. No, but this I think is probably the biggest thing that's happened. Yeah. In it's very sad episode, so um, that it's immediately here it's just people going full conspiracy on both. On both sides, absolutely. Uh, you all, have like every people side. talking yeah. about it being an inside job, and the Secret Service is in on it. And then you have the other people that are like, "It's all about the photo op." It's just sad. It's all sad. But what's it's, not sad, very sad, is the Wolf in the Well. Although the Wolf in the Well <laughs> is also sad. Um, I was going to say, isn't it also a little bit sad? <laughs> Maybe it's just a different kind of sad. Yeah. So. If you want an escape from the madness, whether you're in the United States or overseas, the book will be available in the UK and Australia and Ireland and uh, anywhere where fine books are sold. Um, please uh, consider ordering it. It would mean a lot to me. Uh, I'm not always in the best mental health state, and so that is directly tied <laughs> Very, very uh, to my well-being so yes it's only a few days by the time this goes up i'll try to edit this today but i don't know the next couple days will be busy this could end up airing after it's been out so just check your favorite bookseller or your library you don't have any money it's 20 bucks us ask your librarian to order it have them add it to their collection uh, that's very helpful maybe erica uh, we could include a link to I, I watched one. Of, I, I, I think I have. I, I think I TikTok. have links to the book. If that's what you're going to say. No, 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 no. Built no, into to your, every description. To your, uh, <laughs> to your uh, you did a video of kind of like I don't know if it was on TikTok or YouTube or one of the the socials that kind of went through the story of of this, and I thought that was really well oh, done. Oh, thank so you. Yes, maybe, we maybe can, a little. We sure. Maybe a little. Yeah, uh, I am here. down with it, that. It's beautifully, beautifully drawn. Will Perkins. Will again, Perkins, right? artist uh, on both Goblin books. He's so good. He's so good. He and, good. Uh, you know, the characters that you've created here, I think that people should really check it out. So maybe just a, your little trailer. That's the word. I couldn't yeah, think of the trailer. word trailer. Put your trailer in here. That'd okay. be really fantastic. Um, but, but no, we're not here anyway. to, to plug my books. Uh, we're here to Our, talk about the uh, in name only. In the name. You got it. In name only. So let's hit the button, yeah. shake the crime stick. Uh, do whatever, and let's get there. Do it! Bang. Shake the crime stick! <laughs> to defensive positions! Shoot on my order! Ready weapons! This is In Name Only, directed by Ken Bentley, uh, but it was written by, um... Why, do, why doesn't the John, writer John appear Dorney. on this? Yes, John Dorney. Thank you, Dan. John Dorney. You got uh, it, This buddy. is the last part, as we said, of the Santarans versus Rutan's uh, overarching story. Uh, mm -hmm. It features the War Doctor, a doctor that I know very little about other than his brief appearances on the proper show. So I guess maybe there's been a right. bunch of 
big finish were doctor so stories many. apparently a okay lot. <laughs> so yeah, yeah i knew very little about the doctor or every, every previous doctor we've had some kind of backstory with so this was like brand new yeah uh, I don't know. It's so complicated. The story we'll cover it in the review. There's no really point in is. the synopsis. The doctor's on to stuff and tells you about oh, it. Wait, wait. So what? Don't you think? call him the doctor. Don't call oh, him the yes, doctor. you can't call him the doctor. Yeah. Which is an element that I don't remember, but I know it was probably his whole character in the show. Like I'm not longer the doctor because he was the war doctor, right. and in this he's still a war doctor. He's a doctor during the time war. It's fine. Dan, right. what do you think of the uh, of the story? Yeah, I think much like all the other Big Finish stories that we listen to, and again, this is these are the only one. I've, I've listened to, I think, one or two standalones previously. Two, I think. So this is the most I've listened to Big Finish. I'm just continually impressed by the uh, production design. The audio, the sound design is beautiful. The characters are, the acting is is fantastic. Top rate. Um, especially when you have one actor playing multiple parts and they feel very distinct. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was really fun. Now, the story itself, I found rather confusing. Okay. I, um, okay. Well, um, uh, yeah. Until, I mean, I, I listened to it again, but the first time through, I was like, wait, how do these people... Like, it didn't bother me. It was fine because I, I... By the end, the way that it all wrapped up was fine. But yeah, it was just a little bit like, wait, why is there... So the whole main plot of <clears throat> tying together with everything that happened... Uh, well, sorry. Eric, yes? that was my overall. Okay. Let me let me hear what you thought first, and then we can do the whole. Okay. Yes, and then I can answer your question because I felt like yeah. I would praise the writer of the story because I thought they did a very good job of connecting the previous stories, especially the first story, because this feeds directly the into the first. Story. Yeah, in a way that to me made yes. sense. So I'd yeah. like to talk okay. to you about your confusion on some of this stuff. Please do. Um, I liked it. When I look at all four of them together, it was not my favorite, only because the ones I, that I think about the most are like the one with the Brigadier and Sarah Jane. Mm -hmm. And I felt like there was not as much fun with companions, even the one with um, uh, Chris. I, can't, I know. I, uh, apologies Chris, to Conrad. Yeah, you got it, you got like yeah. that character with... Um, with Charlie. with Charlie, like great chemistry. And like, so this yeah. felt, I understand there's a, uh, a companion of sorts, right? Sort of. So we have a Centaur, right, which skull. we sort of did before. And, and the actor right. was great. Nothing against the actor, but I felt like it missed a little bit of that, like fun companion doctor back and forth. I wonder, but it was, I it was good. Agree. Yeah. Overall, I, I did you... like it. I, I listened to it twice. Um, and the second time, I actually liked it a lot more than the first time. So all in all, it was a good, very well done story and all the things you said. I feel like the, the locations weren't as interesting, even though it's an audio story. And this sounds insane um, right. that you're not seeing the locations. But I felt like right. it felt more like people talking in an office complex in this <laughs> more <laughs> than was. some of the other. It was very I think that like... There wasn't as much maybe Foley sound of like the one that we did that Conrad was in. I felt like you felt like yeah, you were mo you were moving. You were in the yeah, like you could hear the yeah, footsteps. Yeah. There was a little bit more interesting sound design. I feel like in the right. other stories, but still good. So let's jump into plot. Yeah, you're totally and all that right because it was you're either on the battle TARDIS or, or yeah. on a lot of laser explosions, or war, or you're talking. in the. Uh, the uh, Time Lord Council, mm -hmm. like, like, or or you're literally in someone's office, yeah. like that. The, the, the really, most interesting no, sound design part I felt was at the very end or near the end when they're getting the planet killer and like there's like like yeah. cool kind of echo effect that you're in. I forget the you know that time is kind of yeah, like, time's breaking down and all of that. So yeah, it was fine. I, I wonder your your point about not having a, a real companion is a good one, even though they brought back uh, Skull mm -hmm. again. Um, and being able to continue that character seemingly like decades later was kind of cool. Um, I wonder if that's a thing with the war doctor. It, it seems like how could it, the war doctor have a companion? So I'd, I'd be interested to know from the other pros and big finish uh, stories, is that typical for him? He just doesn't have yeah. someone. Can have you him. refresh my memory on the war doctor? No. Okay. Because oh from, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. He, so you go. I know you know more of the modern stuff than I well, do. No, no. I 
all I remember is from, you know, I only watched the, the show and there were the little uh, two, three minute little mini episodes <laughs> in between things. Um, so this is during the time war, the doctor regenerates from uh, eight into the war doctor before it becomes uh, nine. So, and it was like a forced regeneration or something like, well, like he, so he became was, he was because with the sisters of, of Karn. The, right. This, that was it. Yes. He was with the sisters of Karn and they gave him the ability to choose the regeneration that he becomes. And he chose this war doctor. And in this story, you get a lot of the, you know, I'm not a pacifist, I'm not a pacifist anymore. anymore. I'm a war. I man. left these behind, but you know, He's still pretty much the doctor. I don't I don't really see a huge distinction here. It's not like he picked up a machine gun and was just like blowing people away. He, I, I don't and it wasn't not that he would necessarily need to do that. He wasn't uh, He's a little more harder edged, uh, you know, because he talks but, but about he, like you can like commit his... genocide any old time and you're free to do so. Uh, but give yeah. me five minutes. Like he says there's a <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of lines where he's sort of okay with or says People. he is. Yeah, I guess. But but if he's supposed to be like more, more hard edged, although that's that's a thing. I guess I don't remember. I remember sort yeah. of that Sisters of Karn thing, and I remember him choosing that form for the war, and the the fact that there's the pacifist line. I'm no longer pacifist. Like I couldn't remember. Well, is his personality supposed to be like violence and war and aggression? Because well, for so really many not, years it, he was a really pacifist, or is it it's, not that? I don't think it's so much that it's more so uh, if there's a tough decision, just go ahead and make it sort of thing. Right. Like, uh, you know, even if they're, you know, the lesser of two evils, whichever is going to be the thing that is, you know, the most expedient or whatever. I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say the, he did appear, you know, obviously there was um, uh, John Hurt played yeah, the in the, the show. In, yeah. In the show, the name of the doctor. Um, but it's been a while since I've seen that, honestly. And I mean, is he uh, responsible for putting Gallifrey into the time bubbly thing that happened? Oh, that yeah, I don't remember. Doing? Maybe, maybe that yeah, was like the it. result of that. I can't remember any of that stuff with the time warp. It's okay because this is only a Doctor Who show podcast, you know. So, like, why should we know that? Um, no, but anyway, yeah, I think that's that's generally it. I I like this uh, this actor. I thought he did a really good job. Yeah, Jonathan so uh, Carly. Taylor Thomas. Oh, Jonathan Taylor uh, Thomas. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's not a whole lot of reference for me to compare him to. Um, so it's not like someone picking up, you know, trying to do a Sylvester McCoy. Well, I guess Sylvester McCoy could do his own. But anyway, you know what I mean? Like trying to do a, a Hartnell or something like that, like where there's so much that you know. Yeah, that John Hurt is such a distinctive actor and his voice. So like when I heard it, I was like, it didn't sound at all like John Hurt. For me, it was like a completely different character yes. i guess there's a gruffness whereas like when we did the john pertwee one i felt like wow that guy sounds exactly yes. like john pertwee yes. even though in he really the did. afterward he said he he wasn't i thought he did he sounded great this one i did i don't i for me it was like no mistaking obviously john hurts passed away so you know this is something that they do i thought he was a good actor he definitely made the character his own but i didn't I feel like it reminded me at all of john hurt which is not a bad yeah, thing because yeah. He's his own Not person. No, I think it was it was a very clearly defined character that didn't seem to go against the very little that you and I remember of him. Uh, and he did a good job. So, I, to yeah, one point great. on that, and I understand why you would have to do it for marketing and the fact that it's John Hurt and that's the way the doctor is. And they do that with Pertwee. But like with the cover art being clearly John Hurt. Not. And then it's. Wait, is it? Though? Yeah. It's, it's like, like well, it's illustrated, young. but it's 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 a picture of I mean, it's they're drawing John Hurt as the doctor. Which I understand you're going to see it and you're going to know that that's that doctor, but it's actually this other person and maybe make it look it, more like the very, actual actor. Very young incarnation of him. Like I'm looking at the cover art and he's like, he looks like he's in his 40s and not in his Right, cause, 60s. because again, I don't remember. But when you see John, this story takes place during the time war. I don't remember how long the time right. war is. And when you see John Hurt in right. the story, the time well, war time. has over. It's after. It's after, yeah. so I don't know. Time War will age yeah. you. Okay. Like, you'll you'll age up for I, that. I guess so. We don't really ever get to see, other than, oh, I was going to say, we don't really ever get to see Time Lord's age at all. The only time we have is only because out of necessity. Like, we see these references to Tom Baker 
and it's like is it actually that doctor or is it like a version of him in the future and like we had with that museum um, episode Jodie Whittaker and seeing yeah. all the yeah yeah and seeing all the other doctors as well but like the actors had aged and not necessarily the character anyway it doesn't matter it's all um, fine overall he was he was he was great what about okay so this plot yeah this is mostly this is mostly picking up the threads of what happened on Taxodon mm-hmm. so that was uh the Rutans had a plan to create hybrids um, so that a Rutan could pass for or become actually part uh, uh Santara. Yeah, they were so fusing they the DNA, but the Rutan up. was in control of the right. hybrid. But that ended up being like such a hybrid that they were really a distinct thing. And at the end of that, like kaboom, blow it all up. But it turns out everything wasn't destroyed. And in this story, they pick up that thread and the Santarans had reversed the process. Right? Yeah, the so Santarans were able to rudiments. take the bodies or remnants of that explosion and then then reverse engineer it and create their own version, which was Santaran root in the hybrid with the Santarans in control. But right. that actually is like an Ouroboros that, you know, snake eating its own tail because that yep. version of the Santarans were the reason the Rutans were able to figure it out because the when we saw in the Giants Causeway episode, those Santarans right. were actually Santaran Rutan hybrids with the Santarans in control. And that's why they were copying the right. Romans because par- part of the Rutan DNA has copying stuff, right? So it was like, right, which came right, first? Right. Like it was literally a, a causal loop they refer to it as. So that's what he does. Right. Say, so yes, it's yes. like... Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It was just like yes. <laughs> well, I mean, so that's so like I I think I got the plot points, right. and that's why we, and also is that, the, is that, just but it, to put a bow on this uh, sure, at the ahead. end of the yep. uh, Giants Causeway, they do that thing with the uh, overcharged battery or whatever, whatever they do, and it kills all of the the hybrids, but also the Santarans die because they were also hybrids, but we didn't know that they were hybrids right. at that point. But go on. Right, right, right. So I guess my confusion was less so like I got like I just explained yep. the plot points and I think I got the main. I think beats. you got it. It was just more, and, and maybe maybe it was just the second time through, made it a little bit clearer, or in the moment it was just like, wait a minute, because there was that level of also on top of that, Centaurans pretending to be pretending to be pretending time lords to be a <laughs> yeah. time lords. So it's a woman pretending to be a man pretending to be a woman. Insert Victor Victoria here. <laughs> It will work. Oh, Toddy, it will If you not. listen to me and do exactly as I say, in six weeks you'll be the toast of Paris and we will both be very rich. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the nightclub is proud to present one of the great entertainers of our time. The one and only Victor. Victoria. Uh, so that part of it was like, okay, it... It felt like a hat on a hat a little and bit. And that was part of built into the story, right? Because it was a hat on a hat. Like, there were so many... There were Which so many, a, like, paradoxes. Right. Was, I'm not saying it was a right, flaw at all. And I universe. think your point of, like, I think the uh, the writing was very good in that uh, if you listen to the the interviews at the end of the, the episode, um, a little bit of, like, here's three separate stories. Yeah. And now this fourth person has to come in. And now I didn't listen to. to like, okay, I, how am I going to pull these? So you listened right to the behind the scenes thing. Oh, I did it for it. this episode. Yeah. So was okay. the writer part of the writing not part of it but like be consulting on all four Involved, so right. they knew from episode one how it was going to end because i hope it seemed maybe that was the case seemingly oh, not. okay seemingly not that's like, even more what, impressive than that or, they were able to or i don't know like how it, they didn't talk about like the timing of that process but he definitely did reference like i needed to pick up pieces from here and here and here so it felt like those first three stories were pretty much set and ready to go as he was writing his so he was able to take those pieces. So he said, actually, part of the difficulty and, in a way, what made it hard to write this and what made it easy to write it is um, he just had to take the pieces and put to, put that together. And mm-hmm. that does a lot of the work for you. But then the difficulty is making it its own standalone thing, too. So you're trying to not only have a satisfying payoff to all these little pieces and maybe, I don't know, maybe some pieces in the first or second story weren't meant to be carried forward. But he's like, ah, oh, I can use that. And, you know, so... Yeah, the, I think it was really well done. It is a hard thing to be like, yes, it's its own story, but also let me make sure. 
it all one back. piece that like I th- was hoping was going to be connected back or a character would return is right. Wasn't there, there was a root in, in the Sarah Jane, um, Brigadier episode, right? That worked at the convenience store oh. that ended up being a, he was a root and right. That didn't want to follow yeah. in this world. He ceases to exist. Right. Or they're pulled out into a like well, a micro pocket universe at the end. I think they say so. Yeah. He his character, they, I they, guess, is still exists within that. So that's that's a thing. I guess that happens a lot with these types of stories, uh, with big finish and prose and whatnot. If you're going to be touching on areas that also kind of intersect with the main storyline of like the show, a lot of times they'll just be like, apparently they'll just be like. And back to normal again. Yeah, and this like, definitely those, resets like, everything reset. back to normal. Time war still happens. That doesn't change right. with the Daleks. But, but these individual pieces, it, they could have very easily been like, well, time got rewritten and none of this ever happened. But instead, they did this kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a half cheat to be like, no, all these things did happen and they they exist, but they're in their own, I think they said, temporal bubbles. Because of Yeah, course. a lot of bubbles. Um, so it feels like you get a little bit of both in a way that is... I guess it's, it's fine. Yeah. What else are you going to do? Uh, you know, cool. that's that. I yeah. feel like that's par for the course, as they say. A lot of grandfather uh, paradoxes. We got um, a couple of things that are new to us, mm-hmm. I believe, um, that have been around in audio and, and uh, prose form. Um, there's the reference to the anomaly cage created by the heretic. Yes. Now, yeah. That Have we talked about the heretic before? Really? I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't think so. It seems Wait, is like the heretic, the heretic like a... uh, not Morbius, the living vampire? Uh, and it's, it's not, not Mobius, Aslan. the not... brilliant artist. What's no, the not... brain of Morbius? It is Morbius, <clears throat> right? Was he the heretic? Maybe? Was he considered Was he the, heretic? the heretic Time Lord? Well, so like I thought when they said the heretic, that, that was a a nickname for another time lord but like that is like the doctor the master the heretic so i don't know if that was okay dan it's as easy it's called tardis wikia all right the heretic was a time lord who believed that the universe uh and seeing the information the time lords kept bringing he saw wars okay so he is uh from the cult of the heretic and the two masters was where that came from which is audio I, story. I, I did the same. I, I, I oh, did the same reading. I don't think the heretic. I thought I was bringing something new to the TV table. Stories. No, this is the part that I got. Um, but he constructed this anomaly cage in order to regenerate the universe. Mm-hmm. Was his plan, and a time lord has to be a catalyst for it. So instead, they they use that technology to create these to protect themselves from the whole thing kind of collapsing, but also create these temporal bubbles. I guess um, it just felt like. I feel. Oh, oh Jesus! I, I just. I just oh my God! I know where the heretic, the heretic was in reference. The reason I know the heretic from the TV stories that was a reference to one of the Daleks. Wasn't that the crazy Dalek that could like see through the vortex and was oh, like, "Yeah, I can see the right, future." Right, right, right. Blood. He's like just all. He was. That's the heretic I'm thinking of. No, this. Okay, that's why I was like, there must have been another reference. Um, anyway, so that was kind of cool. We get something that apparently has been in a lot of different stories um, uh, that we kind of get introduced to here, which is kind of cool. Uh, there anyway, you go. That was my so Let's re-review uh, Brain of Morbius as well, even though it's not connected. But oh, actually, you said Fantastic. Sisters of Karn, yep. right? That's a has a Sisters of Karn connection in yep. Brain of Morbius. What a great Absolutely. story that is. Uh, that was a yeah. good story. I don't know. I what else do you got to say about okay. this... Uh... Whatever we're doing. I feel like, uh, it, what else are we going to say? I think that was it. It was good. It was uh, enjoyable. Nothing else. Oh, th- very small thing. Okay. Another very small thing that is apparently in a bunch of audio and prose. Uh, that moment when the doctor is in the TARDIS and he's like, ah, you couldn't shoot me anyway. Oh, yes, yes. the TARDIS is in a state of temporal yes. grace. I was like, state well, of temporal I feel like grace. they've done what that on the about? show, though. I feel like they're, I Have feel they? like, yes. I don't recall I feel like, they, well, look at, again. Look that no, up. No, I oh, did. it doesn't say. It, there, I didn't see. I didn't see any story where they call it that. But that concept, I'm sure. Yeah, it I feel like at some show. point, and maybe I'm it. mixing it up with any number of science fiction shows where somebody tries to use a gun and they're like, "You <laughs> sure. can't use a gun here because of the TARDIS." Who knows? I don't know. Right? Don't don't quote me on that. 
so many other science fiction shows do reference the TARDIS. Um, yeah, so there was that. Uh, there was the funny thing with the cloister bell. Yeah, that his was, just food you know, would spoil if, or his uh, a good sandwich is going bad. Don't you feel... I don't know. For me, it feels like the cloister bell used to be a, like, oh my God, something really, really crazy is happening. And it just ends up getting used as a sound effect all the time now. In another story? Um, well, in this story, like, it's clearly the end of time. Or in any... No, so no, no I mean, just sense. like... I just mean, like, across all of who. It's in the same way, it feels like the they can end up relying on the sonic too much to get them out of a jam. Yeah, I don't it know. Feels like the cloister bell is just this, like... Uh oh, something bad. As maybe, but to, like, I, I, I don't know. I would have to like most... in this I case, would have to sense, look back at but... the times that it was used um, in the show. Yeah. But I feel like in all of those instances where it's used, it's whatever the big to do is for that season yeah. or serial or collection of yeah. No, shows. It's, it's never, it's never done. I can't remember. It's never done for something. But like he literally so, says but sometimes just... it goes off when my food's spoiling. Yeah, uh, which, you know, maybe he's <laughs> yeah, just a, he's being. That was a very funny. Thing. Obviously, making a joke and it's not real or it's real. I have trouble figuring out what's you know how to read those things. That's I literally can't read about. anything. I I get like anytime we do a post on TikTok or or Instagram or anything, anyone writes a comment. Any comment. Uh, I don't know how to interp interpret it. And I have to run to my daughter and I'm like, if somebody wrote, they did these things, well, is this a, a proper uh, emoji to respond with? What does this mean? Like, so you right. can't listen to me. Uh, it's yeah, fine. it's all good. You, you gotta, you, you have a young to help uh, translate things for you. Anyway, uh, thank you to, uh, to Conrad for putting us onto this um, and suggesting that we do this, and also for the, we got the chance to to hear him perform. Yeah, so that was so a I'd nice love to uh... do more of those stories. So this was great to have a a series of several stories tied together. Uh, to I, I will say another, finish, not a nitpick, kind of... but um, a thing that would have made it cool. And I, I get you can't do this, but I was hoping like at the end, all the doctors were going to come together, like each point in the story were somehow. You know, like all of a sudden, Colin Baker's oh, here. All of a so sudden, Paul McGann's here. Like, just in a little moment of oh. like, and obviously, you have to pay those actors and it's time and uh, scheduling and well, everything else. So it would have been cool to have like to connect all of the characters that were part of this bigger story in one moment. You could have almost you could imagine if you were to kind of rewrite a bit of this to have you know each doctor in their own story saying something that connects to the other ones you in this final thing they can kind of all and then you just cut like a like, super cut like, edit of them going like don't a super go cut of all of them door <laughs> exactly yeah. listen to it all together okay maybe something a little bit yeah. better than that but that's exactly <laughs> what i'm talking about <laughs> anyway we'll, anyway we'll, uh, we'll write the next big finish story to do that uh anyway, yeah, so, thank you everybody for uh yes. coming along with us on these big finish audios if there are other ones that you think because we have a while yeah i guess really like interested. we'd have to open it up to who comics up. audios i don't i think we're gonna get if down you, the road there's other podcasts that do the novelizations i don't why don't we're not going to, not we're not going do down it. that road friends because readings for yeah. nerds. No, because it's just going to take too long. But uh, if if you have recommendations for for audiobooks or or particularly small series like this, that what I loved about this is we got to see a bunch of different mm -hmm. actors do different doctors and companions that we weren't as familiar with. Sure. So more of that would be really interesting if you have recommendations. If there are comics that you think are really interesting, that especially if they tie into they cross the bridge between classic and new who that'd be awesome. Or if, if you want us to rewatch brain of Morbius, what if we just started again and we just, just like this, it was at Ouroboros. And then we have to re-review all well, of the old classic who shows, but we have yes. to include our yes. review. Of well, that would play reviews. simultaneously. And then we comment on our own. We review our reviews. Oh, it's like a react. It's a react yes. to our review. So we have to Live. watch, okay. listen in real time, and then talk over it. Right, right. Okay, so it's a so review folks, of a if review. If you don't want that to happen, <laughs> if you don't want that to happen, like and subscribe and send this to your friends. I think that's. Do that, I think that's it. I think we like just fuck, as we found the ultimate. Yeah. No. Okay. Anyway. But anyway. Please send us send us recommendations. We'd be happy to do that until the yeah. next um, uh, new stories come. All right. So thank so, you. Uh, cool. Goodbye and thank good you, everybody. Luck. Wolf in the Well, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes, this Tuesday. And if you buy it from your comic shop, probably Wednesday. All right. Thank you, yeah. folks.
Peace. All right, buddy. Bye. Where's my robot? You know.